Hi, this is Kimberly. This is a synopsis and a critique of Chapter 16 of the book Letters from Christopher, Tragic Confessions of the Watts Family Murders by Cheryl and Cadel. This chapter is titled Christopher's First Official Interview. The chapter starts off with the author attempting to diagnose Christopher. She says he shows signs of alexithymia, which is the inability to express emotions or to understand others' emotions. While that seems technically correct, I don't believe Chris Watts has ever been diagnosed. In fact, he said he refused on the advice of his counsel after he was arrested and before he pled guilty. She goes over the part that was discussed earlier in the book of Chris lying, saying Shanann killed the children and that's why he killed her in a rage. That he felt no remorse and he felt nothing for the girls and he was only angry at Shanann for keeping him from his family. I don't get this part. A grown-ass man can see and talk with his family anytime he wants to. If he didn't want a confrontation with his wife because he's chicken shit, start small by saying something like, I really want to still have a relationship with them. They're my parents. Or, if he was feeling bold, he could man up and say something like, Shanann, you're not the boss of me. Mrs. Cadle then puts in the worded interview into the chapter that Chris had with FBI agent Graham Coder. She even says, quote, this is the actual interview. I can understand doing that. This is a place where one does not want to misquote and you need the exact wording for clarity. She begins with the agent asking Chris to write out his version of things. This is the first quote that stood out to me. Chris says that, I mean, I left all the lights in the house. Wait, I thought the spooks, I, I mean the spirits or dark forces turned on all the lights. In fact, Cadle misquotes him here. She leaves out the word on. Was this on purpose? Again, she quotes Chris as saying, that, I mean, I left all the lights in the house, end quote, when he actually said he left them on. So this chapter consists of the conversation between Chris and Coder, where Chris is babbling incoherently. I feel like for this part, I would have been just more satisfied with a summary of this first interview, which is most likely all lies anyway. And then I would have liked to have seen Mrs. Cadle question Chris about it about this interview between him and Coder. I would like to know which part of this interview is true, which part was padded with half-truths and embellishments. This interview, it's too long and it's just a page filler. It's hard to read with all the ums and uhs and likes. It's more satisfying to watch it on YouTube with the subtitles. But it's her book and I get that she can do what she wants. However, it's done incorrectly. For one, she has Chris saying some things that Coder actually said. So please don't trust this. Go to Discovery page 1154 and read onward instead of this chapter. I'm serious. It has so many errors and I don't think it conveys the same meaning. I didn't even notice at first. It was only when I went to search for this because of the lights and that Chris or the evil forces had turned them on. I don't know why I assumed she had done a simple copy-paste. Remember last video where I said it was desirable and permissible and even understandable to copy and paste to get you started, but then to cross-check to make sure you've maintained the integrity of the documents and facts. This is a prime example of that not happening. Even though she says that this was the exact interview, I found a handful of instances where it was not copied verbatim, such as the word exiting instead of texting. So now I had to start from the beginning, and I really didn't want to. I initially thought I wasn't going to have much to say due to this being an apparent copy-paste of 21 pages in this book. Silly me. So let's talk about where she fucked up. I mean, made an error. She said, quote, this is the actual interview, end quote. Yet, no, not really. You can't say it's the actual interview when it's not copied to the letter. You can't say this is the actual interview if you're going to misquote and take it out of order. I do get that it was a lot of work to clean it up for this book. Discovery has line numbers and all of that. But it is easier to clean up text than to come up with your own ideas for creating a book. Here are some of the items that stood out to me. I'm not mentioning some of the smaller misquotes that I found. I started to do every single one and it really began to overwhelm me. So I took them out, the ones that were a word here and a word there. 
I honestly felt like throwing my hands up in the air with this project, going back and forth, back and forth with the book and the discovery, losing my place, confusing the two. I stopped in the middle of what I was doing, went to bed and slammed the door. Then I had a long talk with myself and I reminded myself that I'm not the editor of this book after all. So I got back on it today and to think I thought it would be fun to synopsize this book. Here are some things that I found and it is by no means all inclusive. There's an entire part she jumps over which is fine but then she says things that were not said such as quoting Coder she said quote so let's continue on there's a whole shoe closet I end quote. He did not say, so let's continue on, but he did say the bit about the whole shoe closet. However, it makes no sense since the previous part has been skipped over and left out. It comes out of nowhere. He was establishing that Shanann had a lot of clothing and shoes, and would Chris notice if she had taken some of her belongings to leave for a while? She leaves out line 1263 from the discovery that would make the text in the book flow and make sense, which was, quote, so there's nothing obvious that screams at you, end quote. She quotes Coder as saying different side when he did not. It was actually Chris. This from the book from Chris Watts, quote, yeah, you don't want to spend your whole marriage just like each other faking for the kids, end quote. It was actually Coder that made that statement. Coder asks, quote, okay, emotional for you too, end quote, and then she skips over Chris's answer. By the way, he said, oh yeah, I was bawling my eyes out. She misquoted Coder, quote, so you said your wife called the realtor the week before, end quote, when he actually said, quote, so you said your wife called a week before to the realtor, end quote. These small misquotes add up to big misunderstandings sometimes. It was only one of several in this chapter. I've included it to illustrate a point. She misquotes Chris as having gone downstairs at 5.25 a.m. when he actually told Coder it was 5.15 a.m. She misquotes Chris as saying, and when I left her car was in the garage, end quote. He did confirm this to Coder, but it was not a direct quote as presented in the book. She switches out some words such as police and cop. Why not leave it as it was in the report? She said that Chris Watts said, quote, her friend was freaking out, end quote, but it was Coder that said, quote, okay, all right, so now it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried, end quote. She does not go in the order of the interview. She skips around going backwards sometimes. This is the part where I got tired of the shit and slammed off to bed. And there is more and more and more. I'm not going to point out every single error as this was very tedious, but I just don't want the spread of misinformation. I got tired of it and my eyes were crossing and like I said, I was starting to confuse which was the book and which was the discovery. So I hope I've not blasticated in something that I shouldn't have. All in all, this was an easy chapter for the author, easy in that she copied from Discovery and pasted it into her book. I should have beat her to the punch if I had known it was so easy to write a book. But if one is going to copy and paste, don't jumble it up and change things. And I thought I wasn't going to have anything to talk about in this video with chapter 16. And that will be the end of this video. I will pick up with chapter 17 in the next one. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.